Hey everyone, welcome to Brooks Digi. In this video, we're gonna talk about eight tips and tricks that I use in Capture One on a daily basis. As a digital tech, Capture One is at the core of my workflow. I do the vast majority of my work on set in Capture One, and I use it in a little bit of a different way than some other photographers might if they're using it more as a post-production tool. There's some things that I've picked up over the years that really speed up my workflow. So if you use Capture One on your photo shoot, stick around and check out these eight tips. So for this video, I'm gonna assume that you already have a bit of a working knowledge of Capture One. If you're totally new to Capture One, I'd recommend going over to Capture One's official YouTube channel and over there they have a ton of different tutorials and that's a great place to start. Before we get started, I just wanna say a huge thanks to my friend Corey Nichols for letting me use his photos in this demo. All of these images were shot by Corey at our photo booth at Sundance earlier this year. Follow Corey on Instagram at Unicorn Fight Club. So let's get started. As a digital tech, one of my primary responsibilities on set is exporting RAW files into other formats. This first tip is gonna speed up your export workflow immensely. Let's say that I need to export all of the images in this folder into TIFFs. I have about 350 images here, and I have my full-size TIFF recipe selected here, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit export, or my keyboard shortcut of Command D. So you can see here, it's giving us an estimate of about six minutes left but you can see that I still have all of these images selected and having all of these images selected actually really slows down your processing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate back to my session favorites. I'm going to deselect all of these images with my keyboard shortcut Command Shift A. You see the time drops down to between four and five minutes already. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is navigate over to an empty folder. And if you do both of those steps, you should see a significant improvement in your export speed. Today I'm doing this demo in Capture One 23, and I've noticed that this is actually much less of an issue in this version of Capture One. But if you're using an older version like Capture One 22, this should have a significant impact on your export times. This tip has to do with one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts. We're gonna do a whole video on keyboard shortcuts soon, but this is one that I really can't live without, so I thought it would be appropriate to share it in this video too. The keyboard shortcut that I'm talking about is exposure adjustment. I love having the ability to have a really quick way to adjust my exposure by a tenth of a stop at a time, especially when I'm shooting on location or with natural light that might be changing. So for me, I use the keyboard shortcut period to increase my exposure by a tenth and comma to decrease it by a tenth. I like using these keys because they're right next to the arrows and I can easily navigate between images and adjust my exposure all with one hand without taking my eyes off the screen. Some people like to use the brackets as this keyboard shortcut and that works great too. The key is just having something that you can access with your right hand easily from the arrow keys. So let's show you an example of this here. Obviously these photos were shot in a studio and so our lighting remained pretty consistent, but I've made some adjustments here just to show you how this works. So we're scrolling through our images here. We see we have pretty good exposure. This is the target that I'm trying to hit. And we see that we have one that's a little bright, so I'm just gonna go down two tenths on that. Looks good, a little dark here. We're gonna come up two tenths on that. And you can see that by having your exposure adjustment on these keys here, I can really simply move between my arrow keys and my exposure adjustment all with one hand. This next tip is gonna help you avoid a really common issue that people have in Capture One. And this has to do with navigating through images within your session. In my experience, most photographers seem to be in the habit of using the up and down arrow keys when browsing through images in a folder. So let's say that I wanna look through this folder of images. If I just use the down arrow key to try and go to the next image here, it takes me to the next folder. The reason that this happens is because I have this folder selected in my session favorites here. You can see it's highlighted orange. The usual solution here is to just click on a thumbnail and now you can see that the folder is no longer highlighted orange and if I use the down arrow key, it will take me through this batch of images. We can eliminate this problem altogether by simply changing our habits a bit. And this one comes in two parts. First, instead of using the up and down arrow keys, we need to use the left and right arrow keys. And then, assuming that you're using a Mac, we need to remember to hold down the command key while you're navigating through your images. So if I press command left arrow and command right arrow, that will take me through the batch of images no matter what I have selected on screen. One small problem here as a digital tech is that oftentimes your photographer will wanna come over and do a review of the images and the photographer probably doesn't know this trick so you still might wanna to remember to always click a thumbnail if you see the photographer walking over to you. But I just think it's a really good habit to get into using the command key along with the left and right arrow keys when you're navigating through images. 
Let's take this a step further. Another really common request that photographers have on set is to see the first or the last image in a folder. And there's no default keyboard shortcut for that. The way most people do it is they'll scroll, 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 scroll. Sometimes they'll get frustrated with that and click and drag the slider all the way down and click on that last image. And that's how I see almost every photographer I work with trying to go to the last image in a folder. What I've done instead is I've created a custom keyboard shortcut for command up arrow and command down arrow, and those will take you to the first and last frame in a folder. So I've just always gotten in the habit now of keeping my left hand on the command key when I'm navigating through images and using the left and right arrow keys to go forward and backwards by one and up and down along with that command key to go to the first and last image in the set. And that one has sped up my workflow so much. It saved me so much time on set. All of these keyboard shortcuts assume that you're on a Mac. If you're using a PC, there might be some slight variations here. So those are just a few ways that you can use some simple keyboard shortcuts to speed up your editing workflow. This next tip is another one related to adjusting exposure on set. Oftentimes when you're shooting on location or with changing lighting conditions, your camera settings are gonna be changing from time to time as the light is moving. Sometimes we don't make these changes fast enough, and so this tip is a way to really quickly and easily see the exact range of frames that you need to make those adjustments to. So let's take a look at an example of this. If we look at our exposure settings here, you see that we're at 2500 ISO, a 320th of a second, and F5.6. If I start going through this batch of images, you see that the lighting change was made and our exposure gets progressively brighter even though our camera settings haven't changed. So what I did was I asked the photographer to stop down a third in shutter speed and you can see that that happened right here. Now we're at a 400th of a second. So how do I go back and change all of those overexposed frames to look the same as the ones that were shot at the correct settings? Well, for that, I'm gonna use two different viewing mode tools. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the viewer. The default keyboard shortcut now is G for grid. So that's gonna hide the viewer and we see just the browser thumbnails here. And sometimes I can do this just visually from here. You can kind of see that our frames here and here are looking good and then we get a little hot here and then we correct it here. So what I could do is I could go through here and I could select all of these and I could use my exposure keyboard shortcut that we established earlier and I can make those frames a third darker. But sometimes that's inaccurate. If you're looking at a big batch of frames like this, it can often be hard to tell where those changes need to be made based on where the camera settings changed. And for that, I'm gonna go into a different view mode. We're gonna use list view, which is this icon right up here. And here you can see that I actually did a pretty poor job of visually identifying this because in this view, you can see all of your camera settings at a glance and you can see that I actually did select a couple thumbnails that were shot at the correct shutter speed and made the adjustments on those. What I probably should have done instead was just selected these frames in this range that are all at a 320th of a second before that change was made to a 400th. From there, I can again use my exposure keyboard shortcut to make that fine adjustment. My philosophy is always to change something in the moment as quickly as possible rather than trying to make a note of it for later because I know myself well enough to know I'm inevitably gonna forget to make that change. So using this method allows me to make those changes really quickly, but more important, accurately, and then move on with the rest of the shoot. Next, I want to talk about something that has been a part of Capture One for a really long time, but was recently hidden in the default workspace because a lot of users were confused by it. I'm talking about edit all selected variants. Let's back up a little bit and talk about variants in Capture One. You can see I have these four images on screen. This first one is highlighted with a thick border, and you can see that in the thumbnails as well. And the remaining four are highlighted with a thinner border. This is called my primary and selected variants. The thick border is the primary variant and the other three images are the selected variants. With edit all selected variants turned on, anything that you do to this image with the keyboard, so that would be a star rating, a color tag, exposure or white balance adjustment via keyboard shortcut, or also anything that you do with the speed edit tool, which is something I don't really use on set, but I know a lot of people out there use, that's gonna apply to all of these images. So let's give you the speed edit example. I'm gonna select W, which is speed edit for contrast. And you can see that contrast slider shows up on all of these images. Most of the time, this is how we want Capture One to behave. Sometimes though, we can leverage the power of turning off edit all selected variants to speed up our workflow a bit. A great example of this is when an art director needs to make selects on a lot of different images that are all really similar. 
and you wanna look at them in a four up or eight up or 12 up configuration. You can turn off edit all selected variants. You can show them all these images and then they can say, oh, I like the one on the top right. And then we can navigate over to that image, make it the primary variant and put that rating on it. And now you see that that rating only gets applied to that one image, even though I have four selected on screen. Let's go to the next batch and let's try this again with the speed edit tool. So here you can see that I have a group of images that all have slight variations in color temperature. There was a change in the color temperature of the light between this frame and this one. And so I wanna make all of these first four images look as close as possible to these last five. So in order to do that, I can turn off edit all selected variants and keep my reference images up on screen while I work with these images that need the corrections. And so I'm gonna use a speed edit tool and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit of magenta to these images that kind of feel like they have a green cast. There we go. And I'm just gonna go one at a time and make those changes. And this one also is looking a little dark, so I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcut for exposure and push that a tenth. Same with this one, I'm gonna push that a tenth and go a little bit more magenta. And let's warm it up a little bit too. Come back here. And so now you can see that all these images are looking a little bit better all together. And by keeping those originals up but not affecting them, we can work with the problematic images and conform them to the color temperature and the look that we're going for with our heroes. So once I'm done with those edits, if I wanted to say go and export these images using my keyboard shortcut command D, I might get this message that pops up where you have selected multiple variants but edit all selected variants is turned off. Do you want to export only the primary variant or all selected variants? In this case, we do want to export all of those variants. So I'm going to select all here, but that's just going to kind of remind me that I need to come back up to this tool and turn edit all selected variants back on when I'm done with my task. Every once in a while, you might find yourself in a situation where you need to have two cameras tethered at the same time. So I have got two Fuji GFX 100s here. Both of them are connected into my computer. And you can see here that one is coming up here. And then if I come to this drop down menu, I can switch to the other one. You see it has different camera settings here. That method works great if you have one photographer using both of these cameras on the same shoot, but not at the same time. But what if you find yourself in a situation where you need to run both cameras at the same time? A lot of people think that this is not possible in Capture One, but you can do it if you make multiple sessions. So let me show you how. The first thing that we need to do is go into our Capture One settings and make sure that we have Open in New Window selected under Catalog and Session. That's what's gonna allow you to have both sessions running at the same time. If you don't have this selected and you open your second session, it's not gonna work because it's gonna replace the one that you had running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new session and for this demo, I'll call this you know Hero Session. And this is gonna be the main session that we're gonna use for this whole job. I'm also gonna create a second session and we'll call this one session B. So now I'm gonna go into Finder and I'm gonna to navigate to my hero session. And I'm gonna say, because I've seen this hypothetical shot list that shots 10 through 15 are gonna be on our second set. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this uh, shot 10 through shot 15 folders out of our hero session, and I'm gonna drag them into session favorites in our session B. So now that we have both cameras tethered into both sessions, I'm gonna go in session B, and we will select shot 10 as our capture folder in this session. We'll set shot one as our capture folder in our hero session. And if I fire both of these cameras, we got two images coming in. It'll take one second here. So session B, we have an image here. Hello, Milan, my lovely assistant. Session A, we have this very underexposed image. But if you recall, these shot folders in our session favorites, we actually took from the hero session. So if I come back to the hero session and I go to shot 10 here, you see that image is also in this session. And so all these files are in one place. They can all be backed up with one workflow. And this second session is simply a means to an end to keep our second camera connected. One other thing that can be really useful with this workflow is to have a second monitor, and that way you could have each of these sessions living on their own monitor, and it feels almost like you have them running on separate computers, but in reality, it's all happening under one roof, so to speak. So this is one of those hacks where I, I really hope that I don't ever end up in the situation where the client hasn't prepared me adequately and I need to pull this one out of the bag, but I'm glad to know that it works when I find myself in that situation, and I have had to use it a few times before. 
Let's dive into our last one here. This next tip has to do with the overlay tool in Capture One, and there's a lot of different ways that you can use the overlay tool creatively to get around some of the limitations or quirks of the software. On most shoots, the client is gonna have a number of different crop ratios that they need your images to fit into for various different media placements. I recently had a shoot where the client wanted to make sure that all of the vertical frames would fit into a square format, a three by four, and a nine by 16. There's no way that I can show all of these crops all at once in Capture One, but we can do this with an overlay. So I created this overlay in Photoshop to show all of those different ratios at the same time. Obviously, this isn't perfect for cropping. As you can see with the square here, this isn't the final square crop that we would want to have for this image, but it at least shows the client an idea of how the image is working in all these different ratios and assuring them that they have enough room top and bottom, left and right to do all of this. In another example, you might have a client that knows that they want all of their final images to be a square crop, but they still want to see everything that's happening outside of that square frame as well. What you could do is use the crop tool to create a square crop like this. And then you could go into your preferences and you could adjust the brightness and opacity of the area outside of the image so that you can see various degrees of the rest of the image to the client's liking. So this method gives you a lot of flexibility over what's being displayed, how much opacity you're showing outside of the image, moving the crop really easily, et cetera. But the problem is the second that you select another cursor tool, like let's say I need the white balance picker, for example, you lose that area outside the image and you have to go back to the crop tool to show the client what they want. For me, this is especially problematic because I use the focus picker tool to check focus as my frames are coming in. And every time that I click on this, then the crop goes away. And so that workflow does not work for me when a client makes this request. Another big problem with this tool is that once you have a crop applied to a vertical or horizontal image and the photographer changes their orientation, that crop is gonna keep its same absolute dimensions rather than expanding to the long edge of the horizontal frame. So what happens is you actually lose a lot of image area outside of the crop for no reason at all when the photographer changes orientations. So in order to solve both of these problems, I like to do this with an overlay instead. So let's reset this crop here. And I'm gonna bring up this overlay file that I created. You can see if you look over in the thumbnail here, there's actually a lot of black area outside of this image that I've created. So I've got more flexibility to move it around. And when I switch between horizontal and vertical images, you don't lose anything off the edges. You can also adjust the opacity so you can show less or more of what's outside of the crop. And if you wanna you know, adjust the size of this and move in, you can do that with the scale. And you can also see I'm using this move overlay tool here to just drag this around the frame rather than using the vertical and horizontal positioning sliders, which can be a little clunky. So this is one way that I've kind of hacked the overlay tool to perform in the same way as that crop tool, but do it even better for those very specific reasons. So those were my top eight Capture One tips and tricks that you might not have known about before. I really love how all these different tricks speed up my workflow and make my work more accurate and efficient on set. And I hope that you found some of these useful and can implement them into your own workflow. If you'd like to see a future video about any of these tips in more depth, leave a comment below. We've got a lot more videos going in depth in Capture One coming up. So be sure to comment and subscribe. Hope you find these helpful and have a great shoot.